radio for the Agile community. www.agile.fm Agile FM Podcast and today I'm here with somebody who has a famous, famous name, Kramer. Elizabeth <laughs> Elizabeth Kramer. Uh, she just goes by Kramer. Is that okay if I refer to you as Kramer on this podcast? Well, of course, absolutely. Actually, my teams just started calling me Kramer a few years ago, That's so feel free. All right. Awesome. Your website is KramerAgile.com. Your Twitter handle right. also Kramer Agile. Super easy. Uh, when you go on that website, um, and obviously Kramer, uh, for everybody who has uh, watched Seinfeld, like myself, um, it's a big name. Yeah, it is a big name. I actually married into it, so that <laughs> people call my husband Kramer as well. So we got a bunch of Kramers running around confusing everyone. <laughs> so there's not only one Kramer. That's what we just already learned. Awesome. Yeah, a whole bunch of us. Yeah, just want to make sure Kramer, uh, for everybody visiting a website with an K. Right. All right. So you're an agile coach, consultant, and you have worked with some really, really large companies such as the Nationwide Insurance, Pfizer, Samsung, Cisco, Independent Health, and you even went out to China for some work with uh, Agile Work. Uh, recently, you started. So we want to talk about that part, the coaching part, the consulting part. But we also want to talk about something which is uh, listed in your resources section on your website, uh, which is the a series, I would call it a, a video series. I think they're called Common Craft Style Videos. Right. I want to talk about those a little bit because they're really fun. And uh, okay. what uh, we have planned with those uh, videos maybe going forward. All right. So let's talk about this. The videos, what are they? And you, let's talk about the last one you just released, the Pachinko chart. Uh, you just released that, I think, a few days ago um, uh, as, as a Vimeo video or something like that or is it YouTube I forgot to be honest but they I've are been on both. awesome why are they so powerful for agile teams and why did you why did you choose this format okay so so these videos are very short they're usually four minutes or less they are based on as you identified common craft uh, it's a book that a, a guy named Lee Lefevre and his wife Sachi wrote about a year ago mm -hmm. this book is called the art of explanation uh, and when it came out, it, it really blew me away because for once we could uh, have a very visual format and have complete control over what that video looks like. Mm -hmm. So using very simple tools and hand drawing the characters that are in these videos, mm -hmm. you can put together and, and shoot a video and with the, you know editing tools that are available to everyone now, put together a four minute video that either explain something that you're doing within Agile, or uh, in the, the case of my first two, talk a little bit about my practice and how I approach product owner coaching and how I approach advanced artifacts. Mm -hmm. So really powerful stuff, but it's simple, just like just like the, the powerful, simple things that we do in Agile. Right. So for everybody to visualize what is going on in these uh, videos is uh, you basically cut out pieces of paper, um, you put them together after you created a storyboard, and you uh, basically tell a story while these pieces of paper are moved around, things are being added, removed, and so on. A couple of sound bites um, in addition to it. And then there is a, a person who takes the entire video with a camera. Is that right? Right. So the, the images are hand-drawn. And uh, I'll say the same thing that everyone says. I actually don't draw that well. Most of mine are stick figures. Uh, I draw them with a Sharpie on heavy white paper, and then you cut them out like paper dolls. Mm -hmm. So you write the story. You have a point that you're trying to get across. Uh, you mentioned pachinko chart, and so this video explains how to create a pachinko chart, which is um, an, a, a new way to do some release planning within Agile. Mm -hmm. Draw the characters, tell the story. Um, I write a script, tell the story, uh, and then with a, a video guy, we actually shoot the video and what you'll find that's unusual about that is that we're actually shooting down. Mm -hmm. So we have we have rigged up this device where we can put the camera. It's actually strapped to one of my husband's uh, microphone stands for guitars. Okay. Actually shooting that video down, and then uh, we we run through it. I'm you're moving you're moving figures in and out, 
mm-hmm. as you go through the video, and then um, we re-record the audio for better better quality, mm-hmm. and then then my video person, whose name is Dave Williamson, actually goes through and does the edits for me. It does a little bit of editing going on. Yeah. So you you know where the pauses are. You set them up like you would script a movie, and so you're going you're going to have certain scenes. You're going to move these characters in and out of the scenes. You'll have the audio that goes along with it that's explaining what goes on, mm-hmm. um, and then you're going to tighten it up at the end so that you can have it be a nice smooth story. So it's actually very simple to do. If you if anyone's done some video work in the background or is a natural storyteller, these are great powerful tools. Mm-hmm. For marketing and explaining agile concepts. Right. So th- that's one aspect of it. It's like you're using it to explain some concepts of agile you feel very passionate about as an agile coach, but you can use those mm-hmm. videos even for other things internally, right? An agile team could um, maybe even tell a story about their project. Yeah, and that's actually a really good idea because everything's about marketing. And so if we're doing really well on an agile team, when we do a show and tell or when we're trying to get additional funding from executives, Mm -hmm. we may want to create a video like this that kind of tells the story of what our team did Mm -hmm. and puts it in a different format that's just, um, you know, they're easy to watch. The the idea is that everything stays very simple. Mm -hmm. So I think they're great tools. You know, for those of us who are agile consultants, we, we may not have the biggest marketing budgets in the world. So this is one way to have complete control of a different kind of tool that you can use for for marketing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would say with with the um, you got to make sure that the value is there. So we don't want to just create videos for no reason. It's either to explain a concept or to provide some value to an agile audience or an executive audience. Okay, the series is called Kramer in Black and White. Why Black and White? You could do them in color, right? You could, and Leela Fever does uh, draws his characters, creates them in color, and uses. Um, some uh, different pastel type colors. I do mine in black and white just because I, you know, being an agile person, I'm, I've got a Sharpie everywhere I turn. Right. Uh, so I just started drawing them in black and white. And, and again, with the stick figures, it seems to make sense. And then of course the play on words with black and white is that the idea is these are simple. I'm gonna explain it to you in black and white, nice and simple. Right, so um, in those drawings, and I think this is, uh, this is really funny because I, we have met in person before, but uh, what's funny is about the, when you said earlier, I can't draw um, uh, very well. But uh, on the other side, when we look at the videos and everybody watching this video podcast or uh, have a chance to go on our YouTube channel and, and see the series here of our podcast as videos and then actually see you in the videos, it's quite a very good representation. <laughs> I have to say, <laughs> the person you are acting out. Right? So, okay, well, thank you for that. I do feel like I have to say, like in this series, I think, uh, how many videos have you released so far? Four or five, I think? I shot four yeah. and three are out right now. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're, they're, they're getting more and more mature. It's almost like an agile project. They're getting better, <laughs> better like more professional. I'm not saying the, the content, the story, but the, the actual production is improving significantly. It's amazing. I don't know. Well, you... I appreciate your saying that yeah. because I think there um, there's a technique where as you're as you're moving certain images in and out, we do something called a build where you may have an image and then you add a little something to it and then you add a little bit more and you have a sound effect that comes in with it. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're right. Over the past three or four, we've found that we can we can make them a little bit more um, interesting than than the early ones. So. Right. I'm glad you noticed that. No, I think the story of Marvelous in all the videos, it's the production itself right behind it. You see you guys are getting more um, you know, familiar with this uh, technique and you come up with more ideas. Uh, there's sounds now involved, um, really well-placed sounds. Uh, the video itself, it's just, a, it's just a fantastic piece. I like it because it's so simple and I think it really tells a wonderful story around um, what we do in Agile and um, iterative uh, you know, incremental development, and it's the same thing as you would apply to your video series. You said there are a couple of more planned in the series, is that right? Oh, there are a bunch of them. So I've got um, probably four or five that are uh, in concept right now. And again, I, I sit down, I sketch out what I think the script will be. So I'm interested more in the story in the beginning, and then um, I, I will I will draw the the characters and the items that go along with it, and. You know, it's funny, on one of your earlier podcasts with Mike Rode from Sketch Notes, mm-hmm. he made a point at the end of, of your interview where he talked about people who say, I can't draw. And uh, I read his book when it first came out, too, and he's right. 
in that he says you can draw almost anything with five basic shapes. That's right. He outlines those in his book, and I actually learned that from him. And I would sit and practice drawing certain things. Uh, there were, the first video has some astrological signs in it, mm-hmm. so I had to learn how to draw an Aries sign and a Libra sign, and mm-hmm. um, you just sit and practice until you get it figured out. So right. it's actually a lot of fun. I have to tell you though, I'm so challenged with drawing. That I even have a that I even have to practice those five basic shapes, <laughs> but um, well, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, but the videos, I think, uh, with the skill of drawing or not, they're getting a wonderful s- story across. They even sometimes just for everybody to visualize this thing. Obviously, the easiest part is to go to Kramer Agile and look at one of those. But it's also what I like about it is like the hands are sometimes in purposely. I mean, you could cut them out, mm-hmm. but uh, mm-hmm. um, I think it just creates this notion of. We know we are not perfect here. It is not a full-blown video, uh, but we're using it to tell an interesting story. Yes, and I think that's the point that Leela Fever makes in his book, and the idea is that they're not perfect. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get more mileage if you just jump in and get it done. And seeing the hands moving images in and out is perfectly fine. There are, it it always happens, and then, and then... Dave Williamson, the editor, the video um, expert, will then cut out some of them and he'll leave some of them in. But the idea is that we can see movement and we recognize that um, this is a very simple way to, to move characters across a screen. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's really like paper dolls. It's yeah. just really kind of moving them around like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So let's say somebody has an idea that listens to this podcast right now, gets interested in the technique, uh, watches some of your videos to get inspired of how you do it. Um, and let's say somebody has an idea, just I, I want to create a video, here's a topic I feel passionate about, I want to do something in less than four minutes. Um, from this point to a potential release of something, how long does that usually take? Just to give an estimate, what, that people get a feeling of how long a video production of something, uh, I don't want to call it simple, but lightweight uh, could take. Yeah, so that's a really good question because um, there are some agencies that that are doing these kinds of common craft style videos, which is what uh, Leela Fever calls them, common craft, that's the name of his company. Uh, They will take several weeks to do production because they're going to probably draw them and create maybe even computer animated type uh, uh, characters. I do mine in two days. So the the most important thing I would say is start with something simple. If you've got four minutes, there's not you're not going to spend a lot of time introducing all kinds of subjects and going off into a lot of detail. Mm-hmm. I'm usually making three points. I have a, a topic, something that I want to talk about, the Pachinko chart, for example. Uh, I'll make three major points about that, and then I'll figure out what kind of a story do I want to tell with that. Do I want to introduce a character and say... Uh, this person's having these problems, and if they only knew how to use this pachinko chart, their life would be better, mm-hmm. and so on. And so I'll craft a story. I'll usually start by writing the script, um, and then typically the next day we shoot. So I usually put a little bit of time in between, and then when we shoot, it's about two hours for us because okay. we kind of have it down to a, a science. These, When I was talking earlier about shooting these with the camera pointing down, you can actually, you're, you're, you're putting the characters on a whiteboard, or I use white poster board that you get at a drugstore. So part of the time is getting the lighting right so that you can adjust for shadows because you have a lot of white images going on top of white, a white background. Right. So it's not difficult at all to do. It just takes a little bit until you do it a couple times, right. and it's easier. All right, so I mean, uh, it is February 2014. Uh, but if you're fast forwarding a little bit to the agile day in uh, New York City uh, on yeah. the um, 18th of September, uh, we have a real <laughs> treat for everybody listening to this podcast. We will actually produce something together. That's the goal. Um, so we have you at the agile day. We do some practice around um, the video production, really spread the uh, the concept and uh, some of the techniques of how a video obviously much more basic than what we see on your site, but something the community can produce together. I think this is a great idea, and when you mentioned this last week uh, uh, when when I was in New York, I, I thought it was such a great idea. So I've been thinking about ways that we can do that, to have an audience, divide the audience up, we'll craft a, a short story, we'll draw the images and cut them out, and then we'll shoot it. Mm-hmm. And you're right, it won't be perfect, but I think we can do it. So yeah. I'm really excited about this. I think the Agile New York City community can certainly do that, I'm confident. 
Yeah, me too. <laughs> All right, let's come to the other side, uh, the, the coaching side of yours. I do want to touch on that too. On your website, you, um, you say, um, and I really like that sentence when you say, I have worked with some really good coaches in the past and some really bad ones. <laughs> and I, yeah. I sensed a little bit of frustration with the Agile coaching community. Uh, maybe the result is the Kramer video series, who knows, uh, that you try to teach and educate more around some certain concepts. But um, why, do you, why do you think that is, that we have as an industry of Agile coaching such a uh, diversity of uh, experience um, and, and skill set? Yeah, let's talk about that for a second. So we need to evolve Agile like we do anything else, and we've had great success in the community. Uh, I have worked with some really great coaches, and the ones that are really good are not only good with teams, uh, they not only know the Scrum basics or XP basics or whatever flavor of Agile that we're coaching, but they understand that we're running a business. So if we are coaches that are there as independent consultants, our job is to stand up the teams, really train them, work with them, coach with them, get them in a good place. Mm -hmm. But we need to remember that we're funded by executives that, have, that we're trying to get something done, and I think that's where it falls down. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm pretty vocal about that in saying... If you are an Agile coach uh, and you had a, a developer background, that's really great. I think the other side of it, the business side, the sales, the marketing, understanding operations and so on, I think that's where it falls down. Mm -hmm. So I feel as though we, we need to find a way to come full circle on this or sometimes, and I've seen this happen too, the Agile effort moves along for a few months and then because we forgot or we didn't feel comfortable getting executive buy-in, it, mm -hmm. it just falls apart. Yeah, I think that was also part of your last video, right? The executive uh, um, insights. I mean, there's there's always a mismatch between the teams, the executive level, and I think that's where you want to go in and basically help uh, bridge the gap um, of communication and collaboration between the entities in an organization. Right, and and, it, and as you know, it's, it's, there's a traditional um, contention between IT and the business, mm -hmm. and so when when on the agile side we come from IT. That makes sense. I mean, it, it started there. But that contention never seems to get any better if we don't figure out a way to build a relationship on the executive and the business side. Mm -hmm. So when we still have those discussions about, you know, tech tech heads versus suits, you know, our world's not going to get any, any better. And so I, I'm really aware of that right now. And I've been on, on some uh, agile initiatives that were great in the beginning. Um, but some of the coaches were actually, kind of, it was embarrassing that like, yeah. you could not put them in front of an executive, you know, for one reason or another, their behavior, the way they dress, the way they acted, it was, it was just disaster. So I, I really feel we, we've got to do something about that or we're going to, you know, have a tough time evolving agile right. uh, in the next few years. Right. But isn't it also like, um, I don't know if there is even an answer for that, but, um, isn't it also like coaching in, in general, if, if we're making a comparison to sports, uh, there is no job description. I, as a as a football coach, you don't have to go through a um, training program to be officially a coach. You're not getting a certificate as a coach, either good or not. And uh, isn't isn't that also something for us in the industry? I mean, there's a scrum master. Uh, certain entities try to certify um, individuals yeah. uh, based on questions, but doesn't that model all fall apart on a coaching side? Well, I think it does. I think you've identified the exact problem. There are there are coaching classes available, um, coaching camps, coaching groups that you can be part of. Mm -hmm. But I don't. But I think this about any two day class that you can take and become certified. What, you know, is the value really good enough? Because what are you really going to learn in those two days that it's deep enough to understand the whole spectrum of things that you're going to run into as a coach? And I think that some some people that have been coaches, maybe they were traditional project managers first. Mm. Um, maybe they came from the business. They came from marketing. They just seem to have a little bit more of a, a broad spectrum of talents. And when you blend that with the IT, I think the coaching works really well. But to say that you can show up for a two-day certification and then really be a great coach, yeah. I'm not buying it. Yeah. I just don't buy it. Right. How do you eye, how do you spot a good agile coach when you see one second? So is it like the first impression you get, or is, is that something which grows for you over time? I think a lot of mine is similar to probably what a lot of senior coaches do that have been doing this for a while. Is first, you're going to watch them with the teams. You watch that interaction and, and dynamic. Are they giving people a chance to talk? 
Can they pull out the quiet ones in the group? Can they see when there's contention or, or, or team members that don't get along? Mm -hmm. Do they really get what we're building? And can they tie that back to business value and really map it back to corporate strategy? When I see that, then I go, we've got a good coach, personality-wise, mm -hmm. uh, knowledge-wise on the agile side, and then also on the business side. So I'm looking at those things first. Um, I've seen some really great people, and the, and the coaches that I work with right now they, they're only people that I've coached with before, or they were on a team of mine somewhere. They were on a team of mine. I've got a couple coaches now that are working with me uh, that were on my teams at Nationwide, or they were on my teams at Capital One, and they were not in a coaching role then. But I saw them in action enough and really believed that they could do it and do a good job as a coach. But then I trained them myself. So, I, you know, it's pretty deep level training and to get them where I think they need to be. Right. I also spot, and I, I think this is how I want to close our podcast here together, is I always also spot good agile coaches when I separate them from scrum masters, which I think is a is a difference. There's a different yes. uh, uh, view. Uh, if you are a scrum master on a project or an agile coach, I don't see it as necessarily as a promotion. It's just like you're doing something different um, on a project. But I also spot it like, and it's I think this is why, um, I would spot you as a good agile coach because agile coaches, I think, also explore our new ideas, which you did with the, uh, with the video series. It's like, let's try something, let's explore an area, um, take a deeper dive and see how that fits and sticks with the, with the agile community. Um, so it's not always textbook, it's not something you learn from others, but also that you actually show initiative and says, I'm going to try something brand new. I mean, all these practices, they emerged somehow, right? That's right. That's right. Well, you're exactly right. And I like the point that you made about this. And usually when I give presentations, I'm pretty, pretty clear on this. Scrum master and coach are two different roles, mm. just like a business analyst and a product owner, two different roles. Mm. So the level of, of, of person that you get for those two should be different. And I think that when you try to blend scrum master and coach, it usually shows me that someone's trying to get coach level and pay scrum master rates. Mm -hmm. So um, I do think that they're different. I think that you know we have to, as coaches, find ways to solve problems that are different. And yeah. so whether it's the videos, the Pachinko chart's a great example. I really created that artifact to save my neck yeah. um, because I was getting a lot of questions from an executive. So those are the kinds of things that we do as coaches that make us really, really effective and, mm -hmm. and enduring with right. our teams. Right, and these are the, the eye-opening things customers want to see. There's a coach uh, provides advice yeah. to a team but also to an organization. And Chuck, here is a, here's an event. Uh, here's an artifact. Um, an agile coach introduces, which uh, helps the organization to overcome certain issues. Yeah, that's right. And as we often say, um, you know, let's try it. And if it doesn't work, we'll try something else. Right. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. right. So uh, I, I just heard uh, this this morning, I heard on the radio somebody say, uh, you can't teach a skill, you can uh, develop a skill. But there has to be a skill, it has to be there. At least it's a basic form. A talent has to be there. That's something you can develop. Uh, but something yes. has to be there. And I think that's yeah. uh, quite uh, an important fact for our guild. Yeah. Yes, completely agree. Good point. Well, I want to thank you for uh, taking some time to uh, share your thoughts around coaches, but also about your video series, about a new format you have created, Kramer in Black and White. Um, people interested in this series, just want to repeat that again, can see the video series on KramerAgile.com. I want to thank you so much for... Um, for this podcast, this interview. Oh, thank you. completely my pleasure. Thanks for having me. I look forward to September. September, maybe in between we see each other, but the latest Absolutely. in September, we're going to do a video um, in New York. And honestly, I just put my neck out there. I'm going to do one of those videos. I'm going to try this myself. It's going to look ugly, but it's going to be <laughs> a, a thing made by Joe Krebs, a video. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you for listening to Agile FM, the radio for the Agile community. I'm your host, Show Krebs. If you're interested in more programming and additional podcasts, please go to www.agile.fm. Talk to you soon.